you know, when we talk about complex pain in patients with advanced illness, you know, there's some real basics that people need to know, which is how to treat patients with opioids and other coanalgesic medication that I would consider part of the toolkit for every single member of the interdisciplinary team, particularly physicians who are the prescribers, but it's a team affair. And I would ask primary care physicians also not to do it alone, to think of it as a team sport. Sure, so when I'm thinking about a primary care physician or another provider actually thinking about patients with complex pain and advanced illness, the first step is a careful assessment so that they are understanding not only the physical components of what may be the pain's, patient's experience of pain, but what's the psychological, the social, and the spiritual components to that, because pain is often a total experience. It's very much in, influenced as well by the family. We need to trust people to start with. You know, most people in this world are very trustworthy. We should start there, and only when people show us aberrant behavior, then we begin to think about, oh, is this somebody who may be not using medications appropriately? I think with advanced illness, we also need to recognize uh, these folks are in the penalty box. Uh, they are moving towards the end of their lives, and the message with every dose of medication is, you're approaching your death. You're approaching your death. And when we say people are non-compliant, we need to ask the question, yes, but what's the psyche that's behind that? And are our plans actually really helping people? So often we've got a good idea of what the plan should be, but it doesn't fit the person's lifestyle. It doesn't fit their economics. It may not be supported by other people at home. And the messaging needs to be one from, from our perspective of how can I develop a plan for you that really works for you and I'm your partner in this process over time. The other thing we need to recognize is pain management is about helping people live their lives. People with bad pain, they don't function well, they don't eat well, they don't sleep well, they don't think well, and they're in, pardon me if I say it so, they've got lousy moods and I could say it much more strongly than that. Some of them are withdrawn, some of them are completely dysfunctional. So you and I as primary providers need to be monitoring the improvement of those dimensions of function. If they're getting better, that's what we hope for. If they're not, we gotta change the plan. And I don't know about you, but I'm not interested in having severe pain for very long I don't want you to be messing around with trying different medications. If it's taking days and weeks, please refer me to a specialist. That's where either the pain team comes in or the palliative care team can be super helpful to primary care providers. So many patients with complex pain, and particularly with advancing illness, get bad neuropathic pain, and they may need to use ketamine or lidocaine or methadone uh, for their management. You know, these are medications that most of us aren't familiar with from our medical school training. Uh, they're really tools uh, where the expertise lies in either the pain management specialists or palliative care teams. We may start those, but those patients then return to the community and primary care providers need to be conscious of, we need to follow these patients fairly closely. Some of these agents, particularly methadone, the adverse effects may come on over several days to several weeks. So unlike classic opioids where we get to steady state within 24 hours, some of these medications we get to steady state in two to four to five weeks. So it's about a relationship, it's about constantly touching base with the patient and their family, it's about making sure the family is educated in what to look for, do we have a change in consciousness so the person's becoming drowsy? Do we have a change in the person's level of cognitive function? Are they becoming a little confused? Or are they becoming a little excited? If the family knows those th are the things to monitor for, they can call the primary provider. The primary provider can actually refer those patients back to the specialist. It it's a partnership, it's a team sport is what I always say.